How's everybody this morning? <laughs> so I'm going to have to just be real with you. I am like, wow. <laughs> man, there's just something that happens. I, I, man, when I get into his presence like that, like this morning, man, that, man. So uh, pray with me a little bit. Um, I have, to, I have to shift gears now. I'm like, okay, I have to get out of myself and kind of get clarity on, on how I'm going to flow this morning. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day, this beautiful winter day. Um, but Jesus, we, we, we thank you because you're here with us. We feel your presence. We, we acknowledge you. You are the final word, and, and, and you're here, and we, we, we are grateful. Lord, I ask that you would uh, shape the word this morning. Shape it so that it, it goes forth with the clarity that you would desire and that it would land on the hearts of the people and that, and that it would not return to you void. Lord, I want to get out of the way for you. Be exalted today. Spirit of God, I ask you to move this morning. <laughs> this is a house of miracles. Do that. Let people know that you move <laughs> and you touch and you heal and you deliver and you, you bring the kingdom to earth. And we acknowledge that we'll work to do things that glorify you, that acknowledge you, and that exalt you. Jesus, you are Lord. To the glory of the Father. And we all said together, Amen. You know, when I woke up this morning, I saw the, the beautiful snow on the ground. I, I had to kind of reorient myself. I'm like, wait a minute. This is still early. November. We're not quite there yet. But the thing I love about Minnesota is the seasons. We get to see the change of seasons. And if we're if if, if we think about it, that's a very that's there's spiritual insight with season change. And we're called as believers to discern times and seasons. Amen? Amen? So it's actually kind of a good thing that we get a chance to see seasons changing around us outside because I believe that we are in a shifting season. We are, we are moving into a new season. Now, we're not going to spend time today on what we believe that season is. That is not important for this message. But I think it's important that we understand that the times are changing. And as believers, we're called not only to discern it, but make sure that we're, we're handling it, that we're managing the change, as opposed to allowing the change to, to manage us. Are you here this morning? Um, when I was growing up, I had this, uh, it was a snow globe. And I used to turn around and shake it. It was real interesting because you see everything, it, when it's settled there, it just looks fine. But when you shake it, all of a sudden you start seeing things like, snow and other little things floating all around in the water. 
Did you ever notice that? But inside of that snow globe, there was always like a, a building or something that was set there. And so even when the snow globe was shaken all around, that thing didn't move. And I believe as believers, <clears throat> we're told in Hebrews 12, 28, that we have a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And so, in the season that we're moving into, where things are shaking all around us, we want to be the people who are established inside the snow globe. Now, here's the thing that is real interesting. It doesn't, it, we may find ourselves uncomfortable in the shaking. We might find ourselves kind of upside down for a minute. But we know that we're not going to be floating and swirling all around when everything else is swirling all around us. Is that fair? Like, I've noticed that there are institutions that I thought were pretty sound, were pretty stable, were pretty settled. And I've noticed that they are shaking. Like, I never thought that I would be in a situation where in America we would begin to question the, the validity of elections because of voter issues. I don't know about you, but I always thought that was pretty settled. But we found that that was something that kind of shook. Hello? You know, the education system, there are things happening now in education that I'm like, wow, wait a minute, I thought that was something that was pretty settled. And we're seeing shaking. The medical environment. I used to think that an uh, institution like the FDA would never be something that could be questioned, and all of a sudden now there's things that people are questioning. There, there's shaking going on. And the thing that I see in these institutions that are shaking is that they are not necessarily established in the kingdom. Now, essentially, I, <laughs> thank you, Lord. We do have a part to play in that, but we're not going to talk about that this morning. What we're going to talk about this morning is, are you and I established in this kingdom? And how do we know? How do we know that we're established in this kingdom? John... 15 verse 5, Jesus tells us, he gives us a good picture on what it means to be established in the kingdom, him. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. If you Remain in me or abide in me, and I abide or remain in you. You will bear much fruit. So what that tells me is I know that I'm established in him when I'm bearing fruit. I know I'm in him when I look at my life and I can say, yeah, I'm bearing some fruit. Now, in the natural, we see that fruit is the result of a healthy plant producing what it was designed to produce. Oh, man, we could go there about what does it mean to be designed? Am I, man, that's, wow. There's a lot there. But a fruit, when it produces what it was designed to produce, is a healthy fruit-bearing entity. Is that fair? So if you're not 
producing fruit, then you're not a healthy entity. Now, fruit is often used to describe a person's outward actions that actually point to a heart condition. And we're going we're, we're to stay here a little bit because I said this in the first service. I'm saying it again. You know, Jesus is not interested in churchy fruit. The pretense that I have to look good, like I have to look like I'm fruity. <laughs> Jesus does not care about how you look. He doesn't care about the fact that on Sunday you look like you have self-control, but on Monday we see how much self-control you have when you're driving down the freeway and somebody cuts you off. And then we know. Right? Jesus isn't interested. He's not interested in churchy look good. I, want to, I just want to spend a little time on that because I think sometimes as believers we spend time working to look good. But that's not fruit. You know, how you look on Sunday or when you're around your Christian friends is not fruit. It's not. Jesus isn't interested in how we look. He's not interested in looking good. He's interested in impact. And when we bear fruit, we have impact. And then when we bear fruit, we know we're established in this kingdom that can't be shaken. And based on the season that we're moving into, our desire is to make sure that we're rooted and grounded in that kingdom. Because let me tell you, friends, things are going to start shaking. You're already seeing a field. You're already seeing it a little bit. But let's make sure we're clear about something. Jesus is not surprised by that. I said in the first service, I'm going to say it again. Jesus is the final word in the earth. He's the final word. He, he's the final word. He is the final word. Things might be happening around, and you might think, where is Jesus? Jesus is like, man, I am here. And it made me, I am very large and in charge. I am the final word. And part of this shaking that we're going to see is an opportunity for the world to see and know who's in charge. You got to catch it. Man, things need to shake around so people can look and see who's really running things. And Jesus is going to be like, I'm running things. You do things the way I say do. You speak the things I say speak, and you'll begin to see things change. That's how we need to begin to think about what's getting ready to happen. But if we allow ourselves to be all worldly and go caught up like the snow globe, we'll be floating around and be missing what Jesus wants. And he wants us to be firmly rooted and grounded in him so we know what to say and do when it's time to say and do it. Are you here with me? So Galatians 5, 22, kind of gives us a feeling of what this, what's this fruit? All about. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is this love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Against such things there is no law. These things are fruit. So when you look at your life, you've got to ask yourself, are these things evident in my life? Now, I said in the first service, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, this is one of these things, man. I, I have to say, I am a, I'm kind of a prophetic preacher, so I don't necessarily, like, you know, go down. I don't necessarily have notes I'm following. The Lord is just kind of flowing with me, so you got to bear with me today. But I said this in the first service. I'm going to say it again. You know, one of the things about fruit in your life is it is an indication of your maturity. Because we are called to be sons. 
women, you too. Don't think of son as a gender thing. Think of son as a positional thing. We are called to be sons. The earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. We are called to be sons. And the fruit in your life is an indication of your maturity. Now, what the Lord was showing me was like, you know, Austin, part of the reason I'm trying to get people to understand this is because there are a lot of kids running around, a lot of children, people that are very me-focused, very, very I-focused. And God was saying that, you know, Austin, when you begin to look at the fruit in your life, you begin to see things through the lens of how you are affecting other people. Your prayer life will change a little bit. You'll stop waking up in the morning going, Lord, bless me. Lord, give me. Lord, take care of me. Those aren't bad things, but they are indications of maturity. Like my kids. What are we eating today, Dad? Can I have the credit card? Can you buy me? Can you do? I mean, nothing wrong with them asking for those things, but... but but if we are very me-oriented, we will find our prayer lives tend to be about us. And when we look at our fruit, we'll find that it's not as, there's not as much there. Because we're not waking up asking about for being self-controlled. Lord, help me have more self-control today. Lord, help me be more loving today. Help me be more of a peaceful person. Like, I, my, I'm finding, I'm just being transparent with you. I was looking at life, my prayer life. I'm like, man, you know, I don't spend enough time praying about fruit in my life. I don't. And the Lord was showing me, said, yeah, Austin, you need to be more fruit conscious because that is going to help in your your, your establishment in the kingdom, it's going to help with your, your rootedness. It's going to help with your groundedness because the world fruit is very evident. So Galatians 5.19 talks about that fruit. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery. Idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions. Let me tell you something. We see a lot of this fruit. I mean, you can turn on the television and see most of this fruit. And if we're going to be real honest, we see some of the fruit in the church. There's some division going on right now. Anti-vax, vax. CRT, not CRT, Democrat, Republican. There's, there's division in the church. There's ascension. Am I re are we being real? And so if we see that and we buy into that and we, and we focus on that, we will find that when things start shaking around, we're going to be shaking because we're aligning with and driving to and, 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 and finding ourselves rooted in worldly doctrine and thought. And Jesus is telling us today that he wants us to be focused on kingdom fruit. So when you see dissension, don't agree with it. This is not about a position. This isn't, are you for or against? This is not about that. This is about how you respond when you see that. On either side of the aisle, how do you respond when you see it? Are you self-controlled or do you drive dissension? Thank you, Lord. And when, and this is the other thing that the Lord was showing me. He said, you know, and hey, by the way, there's a lot of, there's a need for people to share their truth, things that have happened to them, things that they're going through. But the question the Lord was saying is that if you feel the need to do that, what fruit are you producing when you do that? So if I have a desire to share my truth such that we are divided, what was the purpose of me sharing my truth with you? 
Oh man, it's quiet up in here. I mean, so, so, so I'm just, I'm trying to make it plain and real because we see it all around us. And what the Lord is showing me is that because we are not being fruit minded, we are positioning ourselves and leaving ourselves open to be shook when things start shaking around us. And then we're going to start asking ourselves the question, why am I shaking? And the Lord is saying, because you're not rooted and grounded in the kingdom. So then the question becomes, wow, then maybe I need to become a little bit more fruit conscious. Peter talks about this in 2 Peter 1, verses 3 through 9. We're going to read this through a little bit. This is a powerful verse, but I think it lands on what we're talking about. He says, his divine power has given us everything we need, everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Verse 4. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Verse 5. For this reason, make every effort, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities, these fruits, if you remember, they, they're kind of similar to Galatians 5. If you possess these qualities in increasing measure, increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your knowledge, your abiding, your, your, your relationship with him, it'll keep you from being unaffected. As, as, so I'm looking at him like, wow, I'm supposed to be looking at my life and asking, am, am I increasing in these things? It's not enough just for me to say I'm a loving person, but when I wake up in the morning, do I say, hey, do I have more love today than I did yesterday? Is there more goodness in my life today than yesterday? Do I have more faith today than yesterday? Because it's supposed to be increasing. Hello, somebody? We're supposed to be increasing in fruit. We're not supposed to be stagnant and just say, yeah, I feel good. I'm a good person. No. I should be evaluating my life. Jesus said, evaluate your life and ask yourself, are these things an increasing measure? Increasing measure. I was very honest. I was like, wow. Whew. I don't spend enough time thinking about that. I think a lot about God blessing me. I think I'm blessing my family, blessing my children, making sure everything is okay. I don't want anything going wrong, Lord. I just want to be, you know. I, think I spend a lot of time thinking about that. Am I alone? Okay, I'll just be alone. You, all y'all are perfect, got fruit going. Okay, but I'm just talking about me, so I'm preaching to me. Austin? I'm just thinking about me and mine. And the Lord was really challenging me on this. Because I don't want to be one of those people who's shaking. I don't want to be swirling around in the, in the snow globe trying to figure out where I settle. And so then I was like, wow, I need to like lean into this a little bit more, Lord. I need to... I need to start changing up my prayer just a little bit. I need to be a little bit more focused on, on this fruit because this fruit, this, these, these, this, this fruit that I'm talking about actually affects how I interact with people, what I do, how I pray, how I talk to you, how I walk. It's, 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 it's actually bigger than, hey, I'm just talking to you about Jesus. It affects my life. If I'm a person that focuses on peace, the words I speak will ensure peace flows. So I'll be careful about the things I say because I don't want to say things that cause discord or dissension because I'm a peace man. I'll make sure that the words I say bring joy. 
Come on, somebody. I mean, you know, is it just me? I mean, the Lord's really been grappling with this. He said, I need the church to get it. I'm about fruit. I said in the first service, I'm going to say it again. Jesus is a capitalist. If he puts a seed down, he's expecting more seed to come back. It's not a one-for-one one deal. If I invest a seed, I'm expecting a hundredfold. I mean, think about it. You know, he's like, look, look, I'm, you know, I, I, you know, hey, I mean, the, the talent parable should be clear. He said, at least you should have put it in the bank for interest. <laughs> Hello? And so he's a, he's a seed man. He's a, he's a harvest man. He wants fruit. He wants big fruit. He's looking for his church to bring fruit. And if the church is figuring out and thinking about how I get blessed, I'm not going to be a fruit guy. And I'm going to find myself being a child, a kid, and God is not going to be able to give me the things he wants me to do for him. You've got to understand this thing about sonship. Sons run their father's business. Sons run the business. Little kids don't run businesses. Sons run the business. And God's looking for sons to run the business. And right now, we're not really running the business the way he wants us to run it. Because we're looking around and things are kind of floating and things are looking kind of crazy. And you kind of wonder, where's the church in this thing? Why are we coming in here and running this business? And I think part of the reason we're not running the business is because we're not focused on fruit. We're focused on me. It's time to get ready to run business, church. Now, this fruit thing is pretty amazing. Jesus, let's go back to John 5, 15, 5. Oh, I'm so okay. Are you guys with me? You tracking with me? I hope I'm not, hope I'm not missing. I hope I'm not moving too fast. I am the vine. You are the branches. It's amazing. Melissa and I were in California this last week. We had an opportunity to spend some time with a winemaker, and he was, he was explaining all this amazing stuff about wine. It was an amazing trip. And he, and he, and he, he gave us a revelation, he gave me a revelation about how wine, how vines work. He said, you know, if we have an old vine from Italy that we want to plant in California, we just don't take the vine from Italy and just plop it into the ground. It would die. The Italian vine doesn't understand the California soil. It, doesn't, it, it, it can't produce. So what we do is we take this Italian vine and we graft it into some California rootstock, a, a Chardonnay. I was like, wow, so you have a Chardonnay rootstock and a, a, a Pinot Noir grape? He goes, yeah, and it'll grow a Pinot Noir grape because the rootstock is what brings the nutrients up. The rootstock is what provides the life. Jesus is the rootstock. And let's be clear, we're all different types of grapes. That was, I, when, I, when, it, when he said that, it just hit me because I used to read this. I used to read John and be like, wow, so I guess we're all just Concord red grapes, you know. No. We're all different types of fruit. We're all different types of grape, but it's the same rootstock. It's the same rootstock. And it was, they were saying, the life is in the rootstock. His blood is flowing through each and every one of these grapes. And what he's and God's saying, like, and I need these grapes to start producing some fruit. Because if we find ourselves producing worldly fruit, well, you keep reading the story, you keep reading the, the, the passage, Jesus is clear about unfruitfulness. He don't play. It, you know, I don't see fruit. I'm pruning. I'm cutting. 
and I'm throwing some stuff in the fire. I don't want to go there, but I do want us to begin to focus on what kind of fruit are we generating? And what kind of grapes are we? The thing that he said, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to land this plane right here, was really amazing. He goes, yeah, you know, when, I'm, when we're making wine, we don't want all these little, we don't want plump grapes. I'm like, what? He said, no, we don't want grapes full of water. No, we want grapes that have been close to the sun, that are, that are concentrating their juice. So he says, you know, it's kind of like the pants are sagging. And I looked at my voice in line. I'm like, well, I'm not that guy. But, but you know, the, 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 there's, there's, there's this richness, this, this usefulness, this rich fruit. God doesn't want us just sitting on the vine all fat, dumb, and happy, full of water, full of, full of expectations, full of dreams that you didn't fulfill or go after, full of ideas that you didn't do. Just be a fat, plump grape. No, 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 no. He wants a grape that's used. He wants a grape that, that's, that, that's withered a little bit, that's gone through some stuff, that, that wants to go after it. We want to be fruit bearers that are going after God, not sitting on the vine all fat, dumb, and happy, just waiting to go to heaven. That's not what we're called to do. We're called to really engage the world. We're called to engage the world with our fruit and ask ourselves daily, are we increasing in that? It's fruit time. It's fruit time, house. It's time that we start, yeah, it's fruit time. Because I don't want to be caught swirling around when things start shaking. I want to be firmly rooted in the rootstock. I want him looking at me like, yep, you're ready to go. Yep, this fruit is producing. Yeah, we're ready to go. We're ready to do something. I want to be that mature son that God's saying, yeah, let's go do something together. And it starts with our fruit. It starts with how we bear it. It, it starts with desiring to increase in that area of our life. Are you here? Stand to your feet this morning. I'm sorry I'm up here preaching hard. I hope I'm not the angry preacher. I hope, you did. hope you're not catching that. Jesus loves us so much. He loves us so much. He, he's, he's like, Man, I want to do this with you. I want to engage with you. This abide thing is pretty amazing if we think about it. It's a, it's a close relationship. It's not like Jesus is far off up there looking down, going, okay, what you going to do, playing a Nintendo game. That's not how it works. He's the rootstock. We're the branch. We're right there with him. We're in this together. And everything we need is in the rootstock. That's what's so powerful about this thing. Everything we need, healing, it's in the rootstock. Deliverance, it's in the rootstock. Joy is in the rootstock. It's in the rootstock, and we are grafted in there. Let's get some fruit. Man, God is so good. He's calling us to partnership with him, amen? Lift your hands to heaven. Lord, I thank you for an opportunity just to, to, to just be with you today. Lord, we ask that you would just come in and, and, and do some pruning in our life. Prune off dissension. Prune off anger. Prune off idolatry prune these things these worldly things off us so that we can bear the fruit that you would call us to bear help us to be impactful people for you move and touch us Lord Thank you. Now may the Lord bless you.
May the Lord keep you. May he shine his face brightly over you and grant you his peace, his shalom. And we'll be mindful, all of us will be mindful, Lord, to lift you up and give you the praise you're worthy. We all said together, amen. Now, hey, before you leave, our prayer ministers are going to be up here. If you need prayer, if you need something, if God, we said earlier in, at, 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 at communion, Jesus is here. The king of the universe is near. Isn't that amazing? And he wants to partner with us. He wants to touch us. He wants to engage. Don't leave without engaging him. And if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, please come up. We'd love to pray for you. You want to know the rootstock. God bless you. Go in peace and have a great week.